Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the most is 8 second gaming and in today's video we are going to be breaking down 5 tips to absolutely destroy in any fight that you're in. A lot of people still struggle in gunfights but don't worry because I'm here to help but just quickly guys if you're here it's very clear you're looking to get better at Apex. You want to improve, you want to be an absolute dominant force in the game and if that's the case you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have top level coaches including myself creating the best most highly informative guides possible. We have legend guides, gun guides, vod reviews and much much more no matter what you struggle with as a player we have a solution for you. So click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today. But okay, with that said and done, let's hop straight into things. And one thing that I do want to make very clear before we actually get into the tips, this is kind of a bonus tip if you will, is that gunfights in Apex are never the same. The game is constantly changing, it's constantly evolving, you're going to be in different situations. You can never play gunfights the same as you did another time because if you do, you're not actually going to be growing as a player and you're actually going to lose a lot more fights. You have to be understanding the changes and understanding the game and understanding how your opponents are playing in order to change your tactics and actually win the gunfights. Never be a stagnant player. Always be looking to grow, always be looking to change, always be looking to take new advantages in fights. This is something that I see hold a lot of people back. They always think that if I just practice this one gunfight technique, I'll start to win a lot more and that's not the case. So when you're watching this video, really take into account every single one of these tips and start to really focus on them and then you will see more gunfights because you'll be able to adapt and evolve in your fights depending on what you need. But okay, that's our bonus tip done, so let's hop into tip number one, and that is to stop tunnel visioning. This is something that I see a lot, especially in lower ELO players. I jump around a lot on Twitch, I watch some YouTube as well, I like to watch lower ELO players to see what holds people back so I can make these videos better for them. And one thing that I see a lot of people do that is horrible is they tunnel vision in fights. They pick one person, maybe it's the person that they hate the most because they're doing the most damage to them, or it's somebody that's closest to them, or maybe it's the fact that they are are just kind of there when they first see him in the fight. But once they lock onto a target, they forget that there are two other people in the fight as well. They say, this is my guy, you're in my sights, I'm going after you, and all they do is try to kill that one person, and they might even throw themselves out of position or walk out of cover in order to try to kill that person. That then allows them to be counterattacked by that person's team, maybe get a nice little crossfire going on you, and then you're out of the fight and you're dead and your team now has lost because of you. Tunnel visioning is a hard thing to break. I'm not going to lie to you guys here. It is going to be very tough to get out of that mindset. But when you're in a fight, you have to be drilling it constantly in your head. Look at the bigger picture. Understand where the team is playing. Know what angles they have covered. Know what lines they don't have covered. So that if you do have to walk up, you can walk up and break line of sight. Is there cover that you can move to? Is there like a little dip in the terrain that you can play behind and actually can move without them noticing you so you can get a new angle? You should know, hey, there's three people on my team. There's probably three people on their team. Don't touch vision on one person it's going to leave you hanging out to dry and once you start to really get into this mindset you will see that you are actually going to be winning a lot more fights because you're understanding the different angles that they have covered and you're going to be being a lot more consistent in fights because you're not going down as much and you're not opening yourself up to as much damage but okay that's tip number one out of the way so let's move into tip number two and that is to fight in the right ranges for your loadout this is one of the most infuriating things that I see and I see it in every single single elo so don't even worry about this if you're a low elo or high elo player because this tip does affect you i see a lot of people they'll pick up like a sniper rifle and a shotgun and then they'll just be in different ranges that don't matter for those specific weapons sniper rifles like to be in like the longer range fights and shotguns like to be in close range fights, but these guys will be fighting in the medium ranges where the people can easily walk up on them if they get a lot of damage out. Or on the flip side, somebody will have an SMG and a shotgun, two closer range weapons, and they'll be trying to be in a poke battle with another team. They'll be spraying R99s at them and missing entire clips and just wasting and chewing through ammo. And the other team that maybe has a marksman rifle or a 301 or something like that is able to poke you back and do a lot more damage to you than you're doing to them because they have the weapon for it. When Whenever you're picking a loadout, you have to understand the range that you are going to be wanting to play that game. If you're going to be holding strong spots in the middle of zone or something like that, then yeah, you can pick up a sniper rifle because most of your stuff is going to be through poke battles. It's only really until the end of the game that you have to worry about something and hopefully by then you will have an option to swap off onto. Or if you're running an SMG and a shotgun or something like that, you have to understand that you want to be in close range battles. You have to be fighting people. If you're using the wrong loadout for the wrong type of situation, 
weapon, then you're going to be a lot less effective and you're going to essentially be limiting yourself to one weapon. And that's not good. So you can potentially lose your team the gunfight because you wanted to run a specific weapon that wasn't good for what they wanted to do and now you are kind of screwed. This is a very simple fix. Just talk to your teammates, figure out what the game plan is, and then build a loadout based off of that. Very quick, very easy. So let's move into tip number three. And tip number three is to play your character's role. You don't want to step on your teammates toes, especially in a fight. Now, every character in this game has a role. There are three roles on the team. There's an entry fragger, a secondary fragger, and a support. And each character falls into one of those categories. Some do fall into two categories, but for the most part, everyone does have one role. And when you're playing, you have to identify everyone's role on the team in order to actually understand your role in a fight. And for solo queuers, it is going to be tougher because sometimes people play characters that are in the same role. Like sometimes people might play two secondary fraggers on a team. Then you'll kind of have to talk to each other or maybe identify somebody's play style in order to figure out who should be the entry and who should be the secondary. But if you can actually play your role and do that role well, your team will start to win more fights because you're actually doing the job that your character was supposed to do. If you're, say, playing a support character like Lifeline or Newcastle and you're the first one into the fight, you're entering the fight, you're being the entry fragger, you could easily be singled out and targeted and dropped before your team has any chance to do anything about it. That is why they're the support. They're supposed to be the back line. You want to be helping your team out, but let them take the fire. Wraith is a good entry fragger because she has her face. She can run in, take a lot of fire, do a lot of damage, and then back out to safety because she has that ability to do so. If you run in straight into the fight as lifeline, you have nothing to help you get out if things go sideways or you take a lot of damage, so you can easily be singled out and now you've lost your team the fight. Identify your character's role, play that role, let everybody else play their role, and you'll start to see that you're winning more fights because everyone's doing their job. You're not trying to step on their toes. You're not trying to overwrite them. You're not trying to do anything that you're not supposed to be doing, and you're letting everyone do what they're supposed to be doing. Then you win a fight. But now let's move into tip number four, and that is to use your advantages. This is another one that just seriously irks me when I watch people or when I'm actually playing against people as well. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a fight and I've gotten taken a lot of damage. Like I have to pop like a Phoenix kit type of damage and the enemy team just sits and holds their positions and they don't do anything about it. They could easily have swung me or pushed me and they just don't. And then I'm able to heal up to full health, reassess my situation, play it differently and win the fight because they gave me a free reset. Whenever you are playing in a fight, Fight and you have an advantage on the enemy team, you need to be doing something about it. Now, I'm not saying just because you crack somebody, dive headfirst onto their position. No, I'm saying do something about it. Take a new position, take a new angle, walk up on them, heal yourself, do something. Don't just sit there and stare at the same rock over and over and over, waiting for them to peek out again. They know where you are, they know what you're trying to do, and they know that you are potentially lower health because you haven't healed yet, or something along those lines. But if you don't take advantage on it, you're not actually going to be pressing fights enough because you're not doing anything. You're relying on getting a one clip and sometimes it's not good to rely on one clips. Yes, they can happen. Yes, team shots can happen. But if you're not taking advantage on fights, then the enemy team could also do the same thing to you. And if you're giving out free resets, they don't care if they take damage because you're not doing anything about that damage. And another downside to this is if you're just sitting there waiting, you're not ending fights fast enough. And if you don't end fights fast enough and other teams can hear them, guess what's going on? It's going to be third partied. A lot of people in Apex complain about third parties. They say they happen way too often, but when I watch people's fights, they're taking hours to finish them. You should be ending fights within 15 to 30 seconds of starting them. If you do that, then third parties won't have enough time to react to the shots and they won't really be able to catch you with your pants down. By the time they get there, you'd have armor swaps, you'd have heals, everything you need to, in order to fight them off or potentially turn the fight on them and kill them as well. When you get an advantage in a fight, start to really pile drive the enemy team lower and lower so you can start to press these, make them panic, and you'll see that you're winning a lot more fights because they just have no opportunity to do anything about it. But now let's move into tip number five, and this is to play as a team. And I know a lot of people just gasped and they're shocked in horror, and I know, I know, I know. Team play in your team game, I know, it's just absolutely ridiculous for me to suggest. But if you really want to start winning more fights and really start to become a better player, you have to play as a team. Even as a solo queuer, you have to play as a team. Team. The enemy team is probably playing as a team, and if they are, they have an advantage over you if you're playing as a solo. If you're trying to do everything yourself, it's not going to work out. You want to be giving callouts to your team. You want to be helping them out by giving them gear or pinging stuff that they might need. You want to be asking them what they want to do. You want to be that.
bad team player. When people are being communicative and pinging stuff that you need, your team is going to be a lot more happy. They're going to be a lot more willing to actually try their best. And if you go down, they're going to be a lot more willing to help you out. If you've been a dick the entire time and you're doing your own thing, they're not going to risk their life and their game to go get you. They're just going to leave you and now your game is over. But being that person that's just the glue, sticking your team together, being the person that's calling everything out, being that kind of guy is going to make your team a lot more effective because they're all working together for that common goal of winning. And yes, I know the game is to win, so they should be doing it anyway, but sometimes they're just there to play. But let me know if I missed any tips in the comments down below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Second Gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one.